Hello friends, welcome to Time Classes. Today we are going to do a class on vocabulary. Vocabulary as you all know is a very important topic in uh, clearing of these uh, exams. They not only come as direct words where uh, they ask you an antonym, synonym or uh, ask you the meanings of some phrasal verbs, uh, idioms. Uh, they also come as a part of, uh, you know, a challenge in our RC. So make sure that you have a very good vocabulary because having a good vocabulary will definitely help you in improving your scores. Uh, we've already focused a lot on this and spoken to you about, uh, you know, how to go about it. You have to constantly on a daily basis pick up at least 30 to 40 words and try to know the meanings of those words and try to retain at least 10 new words or 15 new words every day. I think uh, you are already doing it. So uh, today we are going to begin with a handout that is based on uh, vocabulary. Please take out your pens and registers and let's start working on it now. So uh, let's start. So we begin with the, today's uh, class and we uh, will begin with the handout which is given on uh, on the on the screen in front of you it is called VAHO 353 2002 beginning with the first question now the first question has got some sentences uh, in fact five sentences and we look at them uh, with a blank or two words that can be used and we have to choose which is a more appropriate word to be used in the sentence. So what we are dealing with is actually homonyms. Uh, homonyms as you all know are words that uh, have similar spellings. They are they have similar pronunciations they may have different uh, uh, pronunciations also like accept and accept uh, but they have different meanings certainly all right so we're looking at some words that sound the same but have different meanings and we'll have to choose uh, the most appropriate one out of the uh, options down below, if you see the options, since we have five sentences, you have, uh, you know, five letters given in each option, which means that you have to choose the most appropriate uh, option. Now, uh, sometimes in these type of questions, by doing only one or two questions also, we can get the right answer. So make sure that you are keeping one eye on the options. So we'll begin and uh, we'll learn more on this uh, in uh, while we take up the examples. So starting with the first uh, statement of the first question. It says, the police soon arrived at the A or B of the crime. Two words given, seen with S-C-E-N-E -E and seen with S-E-E-N. Now which do you think, where do you think the police arrived? Definitely it is the scene, the A option, therefore A is the right answer. Now, if A is the right answer, if we begin with A, can we eliminate the second option? Yes, absolutely, because second option has got B as the answer, B as the opening uh, statement. Therefore, B, uh, second option gets eliminated. Now, the second statement of the same question. You have no right to come in here and A or B with my things. Now, which do you think is appropriate here? Uh, Medlin B, M-E-D-A-L, you already know, is something where we get as an honor or uh, as a part of uniform. And uh, the other one, M-E-D-D-L-E, means, yes, it means to interfere. So, should we use interfere, the uh, A uh, option for come in here and meddle with my things? Yes, absolutely correct. The first one is the right option 
so we'll choose a for the second one all right second statement will require a that means our answer begins with a and a which are the options that have got a and a together only one therefore we already know the answer by looking at only two statements the other three statements can be omitted also in the exam and we can proceed with the uh, marking of the answer right in any case we'll try to do this and learn some more meanings through this uh, third one says while about to reach the finishing line the marathon runner unfortunately pulled a a or b yes it is a an athlete or a runner or a cricketer or a footballer uh, pulls a muscle all right and that muscle is a part of the body up um, that we have in our limbs so pulling a muscle will be the first option the spelling of the muscle that we have in our body is m u s c l e therefore it is indeed the for a as the answer what is the second one b it's a marine uh, creature marine animal uh, it's got a shell uh, belongs to the mollusk family and uh, if ever you go to goa you must try the mussels those who are non vegetarians they can try mussels it comes as a delicious uh, dish as well so you can try some mussels over there all right uh, next fourth one is talking about kos now kos are said to a or b the castle walls what do you think should be the answer the answer is a of course as you already know the answer so uh, oh sorry should be b because a, a means a water bird it's a bird a water bird with long legs and we can't talk about ghosts are said to stalk the castle walls the b part or the b, b uh, word is the right answer what does s t a l k we know of a stalk of a plant a stalk of a tree now that's a part of the tree but to stalk also means to follow somebody in a secretive manner with some bad intention in the mind that is stalking which is again not good or even unlawful so to stalk somebody is to follow in a um, with the intention with some bad intention uh, to create a scare uh, is the reason for stalking so it is uh, even uh, an offense it is counted as an offense the last one is his remarks were the reverse of a or b yes b is the answer here look at these two words complementary the difference is only of e or i and when we look at the b part it says complementary when it is complementary it means it is full of praises to pay a compliment is to praise somebody uh, and uh, what is the first one then well the first one talks about complementary with e now how do we uh, understand this word uh for example if i say your new sofa matches or complements your living room that means the already uh, wonderful living room that you have this is adding value to the living room so complement means something that matches gels bonds agrees with adds value to or enhances the beauty of something is the way we use the word complimentary and uh, this is definitely not the answer the answer is b part which says something that is full of praise so probably the remarks were not full of praise that's what he means to say over here therefore b is the answer moving on next question uh, is talking about some suit so he says in his a or b suit my boyfriend looked out of place in a disco so something where we describe a word that describes a suit 
and it is not suitable for a disco. Which word is appropriate? Yes, it is not S-T-A-Y-E-D. It is actually S-T-A-I-D, which means that such something is very simple or something is uh, unfashionable is what we understand, a plain suit. So that's why he wants to say that this is out of place in a disco. Hence, A is the answer. Stayed is the past tense of stay, which uh, is not suitable over here. Next statement is talking about the cloth that hurt her skin. Now, what kind of a cloth will hurt somebody's skin? Obviously, it has to be a little rough. So, which word is more appropriate? Yes, indeed, coarse, uh, the first one means rough. Therefore, that is certainly the answer. What about the second one? How, how do we understand the second course? Of course, we are doing a course in school. We do a course in college. Uh, a particular field is called a course. Course basically means a path. For example, race course. Race course is the path on which the race is run. Is called the race course. It could be a car race. It could be a horses race. It could be even athletes running on a course, on a race course. That is a course. Course is also for use for rivers. Rivers, the path that the rivers take, the water flows on a particular path. That path is called the course of the river. All right. Similarly, when we use the word course in academics, it also means a path that you're going to follow. For example, a Bachelor of Commerce is a, is a name of a course and it means that it is a certain path that these students will walk upon. That's why we use the word course. All right. So remember from here, C-U-R or C-O-U-R. C-U-R and C-O-U-R will relate to run. For example, a courier, C-O-U-R, I-E-R is a person who runs, who uh, delivers letters or messages, is called a courier. We see uh, current flowing in the wires, uh, the electrical wires that we have in our homes. Yes, that is also uh, used for something that runs. If I give you another example, uh, when we use the word uh, current, C-U-R-R-E-N-T, current relates to the running of the flow of electricity is called the current. Ever walked into a PVR or uh, some other cinema hall and uh, when you are standing in the queue to buy tickets, you see two kinds of counters. One is called current and the other is called advance. Now, advance means something where you would buy a ticket for a show that is going to that 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 is going to happen later. So you buy it in advance. Now that is advance. But when you buy something in current, that means you are buying it for the show that is running now. So C U R or C O U R will relate to run. Uh, if you look at the word. Uh, Currency, C-U-R-R-E-N-C-Y, currency is the money that runs in that country, is called currency. So, when I say that he is currently doing something, am I not referring to something, the time that is running at that time? Yes. So, please remember this root word, C-O-U-R or C-U-R. Next, uh, it talks about two files at the sanatorium are said to contain the blood of saints. Now, which word is more appropriate here? We know F-I-L-E-S. We have these files. Uh, the word is used in computers also. But, of course, we can't store blood in that. Therefore, it's not uh, about those files. But we have some physical files also. A lawyer may have many files in his chamber. So, 
file is where we put our papers definitely we don't put blood in those files hence second is not the answer b is not the answer the answer is a it's files uh, which relates to a plastic bottle uh, or a glass bottle that contains some liquid is called a file therefore a option is correct so what we did was we marked a for the first one again a for the second one and again a for the third one also have we got the answer already yes indeed first is the answer to question number two also we'll still do the rest uh, using the mask with q u e and simply k which is the better answer or which is the correct answer uh, the answer is a now what does mask mean uh, mask is a kind of a you know a face pack or some kind of a, a compound that we use on our face or on our arms to improve the skin that is how we use the word uh, given in the a option the second one of course is something that we use to hide our identity next ralph bought several pens from the which shop are we talking about which uh, spelling would mean a shop that sells pens or pencils yes it is b uh what what does the first one mean then first one means something that is stand still something that is uh, at a halt is stationary so a can't be the answer it is definitely b hence first is the answer to this question next please next we talk about a tycoon who's a tycoon yes a tycoon is an extremely rich person a wealthy person somebody who's doing very well in a particular field is a tycoon for example we talk about uh, the computer tycoon the liquor tycoon the restaurant tycoon so what are we referring to a person who is associated with a particular trade and is very wealthy all right so here we are talking about a tycoon who owns restaurants and we are talking about he having some a or b cellar filled with wines which one should it be can we uh, use the first one no the second one is the answer a cellar with c means a chamber generally an underground chamber where we can stock or store food and wine then it is called a cellar hence b is the right answer if b is the right answer then we are gone with one and four we are left only with second and third so one uh, sentence itself will eliminate two options next next talks about can we yes i think this next statement can be the decider uh it says the little girl grew very very is tired yes the little girl grew very listening to her grandfather a or b uh, and moon so very means tired but also means you know disgusted fed up uh and the word is grown with g r o a n or grown with g r o w n uh, we know grow the third form of grown is uh, grow is grown grow grew grown uh, so um, we know that growing up is different from what we are referring to about the grandfather uh therefore a option should be correct now what does it mean grown means the one with a means a person who is uttering something muttering something out of 
pain or you know disgust then he is groaning all right so a option is correct that means the first one being b and the second one being a b a should be the answer have we got the answer yes only two questions two statements needed to be done and we could reach the right answer now the third statement the novelist had the a or b of his novel written by salman rushti himself so which uh, word will we choose yes absolutely correct four word is the right answer a option is correct what does four word mean it means to you know four uh, means before so when something comes first we talk about four for example your four arm this is your arm say this is your arm what is the four arm the front part of your arm is called the four arm all right so four means something that is in front or something that has come before four fathers four fathers are those who have come before us are called four fathers a forward is also a communication by the author when he writes a book and it comes before the actual book begins so forward is used in that sense and that seems to be correct here it's not about forward next the judge didn't know whether with ea or the whether whether with h to punish the criminal let him go so here we have uh, we are talking about the judge being a little uh, confused or uh, not sure about whether to punish the criminal or let him go uh, in this sense what word will be appropriate yes b uh, because we are talking about he cannot decide so is confused between yes or no and when you're confused between yes or no then you always use whether with h w h a e t h e r and the other whether is the climate that we talk about the environment the surroundings that we talk about therefore that is not the answer the last one talks about a stranger and he says the stranger saved the girl's life he was certainly a knight with n or knight with k uh in shining armor a knight you already know cannot be a knight with n you already know cannot be applied here it can only be a knight with k what does it mean a warrior a warrior that has been uh, rewarded with some medal or we talk about knighthood that means you honor the warriors and give them some stature in society that is called knighthood so it is a knight with k and therefore what should be the answer to 3 yes 2 because first one is second the second one is a the third one is again a and then you have the fourth and fifth sentence to be the second one b so answer is 2 next question number 4 question number 4 talks about the blizzard what's a blizzard a blizzard is a it's it's a snow accompanied by strong winds is called a blizzard just like you have storm storm is what rainfall with strong winds this is snow with star strong winds so that's a blizzard anyway uh we we talk about uh, the blizzard will effect with e or affect with a uh, the tourist which word should be appropriate yes Uh, effect with a because effect with a means to have an effect on something it's used as a verb in the uh, effect with e we generally use it as a noun 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल स्मोकिंग अफेक्ट्स आर लंग्स वेन आई से स्मोकिंग अफेक्ट्स आर लंग्स वॉट आर वी टॉकिंग अबाउट वी आर यूजिंग एज अ वर्ब सो आई यूज ए बट स्मोकिंग हैज अ बैड इफेक्ट ऑन आर लंग्स सो वेन आई से बैड इफेक्ट देन आई एम रेफरिंग टू द नाउ all right uh, please also remember sometimes we use effect with e as a verb also his spectacular batting effected a convincing win his spectacular batting effected a convincing win so cause something to happen can be used with effect that's the meaning that we get with effect with e all right so but it's a very rare case where we use effect as a verb most of the time effect with e is a noun anyway so we begin with b b that means we can eliminate two options third and fourth next one next one now be clever do not waste too much time on the next one because next one from the options you should come to know that the second answer is the right answer that means the second statement also has b as the right answer let's see what it means probably the third one will decide the option Uh, the second one says at the supermarket the luxury items are in the same aisle or aisle as the medical items what is aisle in the first one aisle in the first one is another word for island and the aisle in the second one that's both are pronounced the same aisle so aisle in the second one b part means a passage for example uh, when there are rows of seats and the passes in between those rows of seats is called an aisle ever been to a church in a church you have the aisle all right uh, in an aircraft you also have an aisle the passage on which the passengers can walk inside the aircraft that passage is called the aisle and of course in a cinema hall also if you want the aisle seat it means that you want a seat which is next to the aisles all right so that's what he means to say over here that luxury items as well as the medical items are kept in that same passage uh, so that's what he means and therefore second is also b but it is not helping us much in the exam you are not supposed to spend too much time on uh, this if you if you look at the options the answer is b in both the cases uh the other two are eliminated therefore we should not spend too much time doing this second statement we should straight away come down to the third statement the little girl bears a resemblance bears with b e a r s or b a r e s now b a r e s means to disrobe to take off your clothes sometimes uh, we use the word b a r e s also to show uh, revealing a secret so telling a secret is also bare so something that is hidden gets uncovered we use the word bare now that is not a sense here there is no secret here we are talking about somebody bearing a resemblance and therefore b option is not correct it has to be a to bear a resemblance in simple words means to have a resemblance hence a is the right answer so we've got b b and a are we sure of the option now the correct answer yes indeed uh, the first one is the right answer let's quickly do the fourth one uh, which or which brand of perfume very clearly it is b which is the right answer uh, the children got bored as they had nothing to do during the holidays uh, i'm sure Uh, people going through this bad time of corona have also uh, felt bored at times having nothing to do or having been locked up at home uh, would bring boredom 
and therefore a is the right answer moving on uh, next is talking about chance or chance make use of this chance chance it's your last so you make use of a chant or chance it is your last he says so it could be your last chance a or last chance b what is b well chances to uh, to utter some uh, some mantras chanting of mantras so to chant is to say something in repetition so when we repeat something uh, especially uh, god's mantras then we chant all right chant chant will relate to singing some holy uh, you know praise of god or mantras is chanting so chanting has got nothing to do with the chance that we are talking about the last chance hence a is the answer with a being the first one fourth option gets eliminated second talks about can we get the answer in second no not really because we've got b also and we've got a also the puppy the puppy choose the sofa instead of its bone so when the puppy is chewing something which you are we talking about yes indeed it is c h e w and not c h o o s e therefore that is the right answer next we talk about this is not helping us much anyway uh, except that we can remove uh, b as the answer uh, so we are now left with only 1 and 2 third one says we visited the historical site of the great battle of panipat now which bird will you use appropriate uh, is more appropriate here site with s i g s t or s i t e s i g s t what is s i g s t s i g s t is view vision it's got relation with arise what a beautiful site so we talk about a beautiful site that has got something to do with what we see what about the other one s i t e s i t e uh, is an area that is meant for a building is the site so i talk about you know a site for a hospital that means the government has decided to build a hospital on this area of land that is called a site and uh, shall we now refer to this as the historical area of land where great battle of panipat took place yes so the answer in the third statement is b so we've got uh, a a and b have we got the answer now no unfortunately not because both the options are a a b let's go on and try to look at the next one that should be the decider or no no unfortunately that is also not the decider because from the options we come to know that a is the answer for the fourth one also continuing with that the pirates filled their boats with a or b and made a quick exit so we are talking about pirates what would they have done they would have filled their boats with the a option b option talks about a flute uh, a wind instrument through which we a cylindrical you know piece jisko uh, hum basuri bolte hain so that is a lute uh, same as flute so that cannot be used here it has to be the first one so we get no help from this statement it is we now reach the last uh, statement that can only give us the answer during the rainy season the a or b overflow and form tiny waterfalls slightly difficult one which one should be the answer well let's understand the meaning creek c r e a k what is creek 
creek with c r e a k means some kind of you know, sound for example if the door opens and there is a creaking sound when it opens that means there is some shrill soft sound coming that is called creak creaking of the door creaking of the chair when you rock the chair it makes a kind of a sound that is creaking when two pieces of wood brush against each other the sound emanated is called a creak what about the second one c r w e k because we are talking about rainy season and can we talk about sound coming uh, no and we are talking about the creeks overflow and form tight tiny waterfalls so a is not the answer the second one is the answer therefore second option is the right answer now when we look at the meaning of the word creek c r w e k means you know when uh, along a river or along the coast there could be a little part of sea or river that has a wall around it all right so it is surrounded by three walls and only one part is open and it is not very deep it's very shallow so what happens is that there is some kind of you know water that enters into this creek but it is unable to go out because it is surrounded by land from three sides so uh, sometimes you know people go and uh, go for a uh day spent they go for a picnic over there and uh, and they probably you know do a little bit of swimming also in these creeks because you are not threatened of any strong current it's shallow and the current is also not very strong over there because it is it is uh, surrounded by land from three sides so even children can sometimes you know go in, in some creeks and they can have fun there so that's the word we require option b is the right answer in terms of overflowing and forming tiny waterfalls so option 2 is the right answer next set of questions bring us to uh, looking at some antonyms opposites the word given on top will have four options and you'll have to choose the most uh, relevant option that will give us the antonym of that word so we need to know a little bit of the meaning of the first word of the main word and then probably try to find out the uh, the opposite rebellious when we talk about rebellious so what are we saying somebody is rebellious remember there is uh, a root here b e l l i b e l l i means war fight we have the word rebellious uh, which has b e l l i so b e l l i and b e l l u means fight or war so when we talk about rebellious that means he is ready to fight he goes against the rule is rebellious similarly we have a word belligerent b e l l i g e r e n t belly gerent b e l l i g e r e n t is belly gerent so somebody is belly gerent means he is ready to fight all the time and uh, we also have another word bellicose bellicose is b e l l i c o s e is bellicose so somebody who is ready to fight another word for this is pugnacious p u g n a c i o u s is pugnacious now going against the law or uh, you know challenging the ruler is pugnacious rebellious belicos so what is the opposite the answer is obedient now what is strange stringent stringent is strict or Uh, serious we have some stringent laws that means strict laws all right flippant what's flippant well flippant means when we have a casual approach to something when something serious is being considered 
in a non serious manner then we are being flippant spiteful spiteful what is spite spite is hatred looking down upon others ill will so spiteful is full of hatred full of ill will full of uh, contempt when we look down upon others when we feel that we are superior to others then it is being spiteful next is civility civility means when when you are civil that means you are very polite and when we look at the word civility to mean politeness then the opposite will be impoliteness all right uh, there could be some confusion between courteousness and impoliteness but clearly courteousness is the synonym for civility while impoliteness is just the opposite so discourteousness would have been the right answer in third and uh, just like impoliteness all right unpleasantness could be another option that could con confuse you but be clear uh, being impolite does not mean unpleasant all right so be able to understand the difference between these words number 8 talks about the word indolence now in indolence we have d o l dol relates to pain for example we have a word doleful d o l e f u l now doleful music doleful music i said d o l is pain so doleful music is sad music all right uh we also have a word condolence condolence is c o n d o l e n c e condolence now the word condolence means to offer your sympathy to a family where a death has taken place please remember this word condolence is only to be used at the time of death so in other words we use the word condolence to say because i told you con means together so we are literally saying we are together with you in your hour of pain so this painful time that you are going through we are with you we stand by you this is what you are saying when you offer your condolence all right uh so i have got dol to mean pain but let us understand the word indolence when we have dol to mean pain there is another word which is pains now pain and pains are two different words let's understand how when i have a pain then it is pain not pains i can't say i have three pains or i have many pains in my body i cannot refer to pain as pains because it is uncountable now all right but can i use the word pains for example he takes a lot of pain a lot of pains not pain a lot of pains to to do his project so what does the word mean here does he does he really mean to talk about ache dard no when you talk about pain then it is simply dard but when you talk about pains it means efforts so he takes lot of pains means that he makes lot of effort all right so we use that meaning in indolence here taking lot of pains but we we got in before it just like competent and incompetent so competent and incompetent the difference is of in and in is making it opposite similarly indolence is also making it opposite uh, have doing no pains or taking no pains is what it means in other words it means lazy so indolence is laziness can you tell me what is the right answer here 
Well, if you don't know the second option, then you can probably eliminate 1, 3 and 4. Because the opposite of laziness is not truthfulness, not awkwardness, not dishonesty, but industriousness. Let's understand the word industrious. If you are industrious, then you are hardworking. You take a lot of pains to do your things. That is what we mean by industriousness. All right. So that is the right answer. Moving on to the next one. Next is also continuing with antonyms. The word is recede. Recede means to come down. Uh, the level coming down is recede. For example, if there is, you know, a level of water rising in a particular river and after a few days it starts coming down, then we say the water is receding. We sometimes use it for, you know, uh, somebody's hairline also. So, somebody's hairline is receding, that means it is going down, it is going backwards. It is coming down, is a receding hairline. Alright, so recede means come down or fall behind. Therefore, what should be the opposite to fall behind or come down? Absolutely advance. Fourth option. Abandon is to leave somebody on his own. Uh, is abandon. Retreat. How do we use the word retreat? Retreat means to go back. And, uh, you know, we have uh, in the month of January, soon after our uh, independence, uh, our Republic Day, we have something known as beating the retreat. Now, when we say beating the retreat, it's an it's, uh, idiom that we use to beat the retreat. Retreat he retreated also means turned back, but beating the retreat also means to go back. Why do we call it uh, beating the retreat? Because, see, when we have our uh, Republic Day, we have our forces, our Army, Navy and Air Force, the three armed forces, they come down on Rajput and show us their skills and whatever you know things that they have acquired so they do that all right so they come down to Rajpath to display their skill their might their power and after they performed they go back to their camps so that is why it is called beating the retreat going back so retreat means to go back recede is something that comes before all right your precedents are People who have come before you, your forefathers are presidents or predecessors. Next is contradict. Number 10 is contradict. When we use the word contradict, that means you go against somebody. Contra means against. For example, controversy, contrast. So there's always a sense of against. And contradict is to deny or to go against somebody, to refuse to accept what somebody is saying is to contradict. Therefore, what should be the right opposite? The answer is confirmed. Contradict is to refuse or to disagree and contradict is to confirm, to agree with somebody. 